Good afternoon. It is September 1st, 2024, and it is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And today in the Gospel, Jesus is reminding us that what defiles us does not come from outside of us. It's what comes from within us. And at the same time, we're reminded about the laws, the ordinances, the commandments, the traditions that we've been given that are supposed to help form our heart so that it stays away from that which defiles and embraces that which lifts us up, brings us closer to God. Within our hearts, there is love, there is compassion, there is empathy, there is charity, there is forgiveness, there is mercy. But at the same time, within the heart, there is also greed, there is anger, there is all kinds of passions, there is narcissism, there is arrogance, there is pride. All of these things are there also. The challenge that we have is how do we build up the good side and diminish the weak side. And so our challenge is how do we do it? And that's what they refer to as the longest journey from the head to the heart and the heart to the head. You see, Jesus and God the Father come into this world and Jesus says, I come not to abolish the law and the prophets, but to bring them into their fulfillment. The Father, through the prophets, through Moses, gave us the commandments, gave us the teaching, gave us the traditions that we should follow. And they serve a purpose. And that purpose is to align our hearts with God the Father. Jesus comes along and offers us the same thing. But he shows us this in a wondrous and very challenging way. He does that through his suffering and death and resurrection. There's an old song from years ago, Love Hurts. And it's true. Love does hurt. But then again, it's supposed to. If love is truly about the sacrificial nature of the person, making sacrifices for another person, yes, is sometimes painful. If we look at the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and this is one of those oldest traditions we have in the church. It goes all the way back to the time of St. John, when at the Last Supper he has his head on the chest of Christ. And the next day, Jesus has suffered, and in his suffering, he offers his mother to John and John to his mother. John now takes his mother, Mary, into John's home. He makes a sacrifice for Christ. Nothing compared to the sacrifice that Jesus is making on the cross, but that sense of sacrificial love. Now, if you look very closely at any image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the first thing you notice is that the heart is pierced. It suffers. But again, in our scriptures, we are told that God will take our stony, stony hearts and give us hearts of flesh. A stony heart, once broken, is useless. A heart of flesh, on the other hand, will heal. It may have a scar, but it will heal. And it is able to continue to love and to grow in love. And sometimes those scars are what allow us to flow the love of God through our own hearts in the same manner that Jesus did for us. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. And he laid down his life and he died for us. What's the level of love that we have for one another? Within a marriage, when the husband loves the wife and the wife loves the husband, the love that flows and is reciprocated is God made present in the world. One of the oldest traditions in our Catholic Church is that the bride walks into the church carrying a red rose. Why? To symbolize sacrificial love. The willingness of the husband and wife to die for each other. That they will lay down their life for the other. That they will always be there for the other. And that challenge is there for all of us. Can I see Christ in each other? The husband should be able to see Christ in his wife. The wife should be able to see Christ in her husband. Because it's what Christ brings them together and holds them together. At the same time, parents should be able to see Christ in their children, and children see Christ in their parents. This relational love relationship. 
but it begins and ends with reverence, respect, honor. In the marriage ceremony, the bride and groom say, I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. But do they? And when they don't, do they seek reconciliation? Do they seek to come back together again? And that becomes the hardest challenge of all. And then do they forgive and rise above it, right? One of the scariest things is when people like to remind each other of when they messed up 10 years ago, 20 years ago. How's that beneficial? And the other side of it is, is when do we learn how to laugh at our stupidity and our faults and our failings? To be able to look back and go, yes, I did that. It was not one of my best days. I was being rather foolish or I was being stubborn or I was being you know, selfish or whatever. Can we laugh at our own faults and failings? Challenges is the journey. To love one another as Christ has loved us. To forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. To forgive ourselves in the manner that Christ has forgiven us. This is all about that love relationship. To love one another as Christ has loved us. But to do this means to order our hearts according to the will of God. And we do that through mind and heart. And the two of them coming together. We all know people who speak without thinking. We all know people who get angry without, you know, the drop of the hat, they're angry. When do we show self-control, self-restraint? When does our head and our heart get it together? So that we are guided and directed in the proper manner, in a holy manner, in a righteous manner. It is September 1st, 2024. It is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. May God continue to watch over you, bless you, protect you all the days of your life.